Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of DIY MMO where I make an MMO on YouTube but only when I'm not literally dying of the plague. So yeah, there wasn't an episode for a while because I was sick for a while. And for a while I mean like basically two weeks. Or a week and a half I guess. Um, I did do some stuff in the interim which I shall tell you about now. Actually, let's start with a little story about me. So, see, when when I get sick, you have people, most people, I think, who get sick. They just kind of lie in bed all day and, you know, sleep. Me? When, because everything that has to do with breathing, so my nose and my lungs and my sinuses and everything, is basically unreliable in my body. If I If I'm sick and I lie down, then I'm going to be extra miserable, and I can't breathe, and it's awful, and I hate it. So what I do is I just stay up as much as possible and do stuff to distract me from being sick. So I, I did a lot of stuff, but not on, on the game. I did, um, like, a text box thing and an animation tweening framework while I was sick. So that's a thing. Um, okay, so you, you, you notice that the mouse thing no longer tells you, um, where the mouse is because I removed that. There's an FPS counter here. Um, you might think, wow, 70 FPS isn't very good, is it? Um, that's cause, cause we're running in debug mode, so what I do in debug mode is, also, I've, uh, increased the size of the font. Um because someone asked. I kind of don't want to go any bigger than this because it's gonna get hard for me to actually read it if I go to 15 point. Anyway, so if we have have a debug setting, then we're gonna debug the OpenGL because bleh, why not? And we do that every frame. Um, although I think this will do it every call. I'm not sure, but either way, that's what's making it slow now. If I if I build the release version, and then I I go into the client bin release, and I run the client. Oh, I've also spoiled myself on that. But then you can see it's 280 FPS, which is a lot more. Anyway, what I've also done, I've cleaned up my code a bit. So container you used to have all this crap in it, like the entire client, basically. Which is, it's not what you want. Um, there's a lot less in it now, you can see there's a change scene function here, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Also, I added uh, the GUI. I'll, I'll get into that in a bit, but let's just do this first. Um, so it changes the scene to a loading s screen. A loading scene or a loading screen? Nobody knows. And all the all the other stuff is gone. That's called refactoring. It's where you make your code less horrible by putting it in different places. So I made a scene class and that just has a begin, update, render and end functions and it's basically the same as the container, except you can make multiple scenes. So we have an in-game scene, and that has basically all the code that we used to have. It basically does all the same stuff. So, you know, um, yeah, that's that's the 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 the, the in-game scene. And then we have the loading screen. Now, I'm not going to really go into this too much because it's not that interesting. But what this does is I was I was I I need to do asynchronous loading because of the way that the web version would work if we had a web version, which we currently don't. Um so I wanted to make a loading screen that shows while you're loading stuff so it's not as much of a pain and I don't need to do in-game. Once I'm in here, I already know that everything's going to be loaded so I don't need to do a bunch of checks to make sure everything's loaded. Because it's, it went through here. 
So the loading screen basically has a customizable message and a font size and you give it a, a function that it calls which loads the content and then once the content is done loading it will go to the next scene which in our case is uh, the game. Now you can see that it does this neat little fade thingy. Both of them do actually. So that's using my tweeting framework. So it's just this kind of notation. <coughs> Excuse me, still a little bit, you know, sickish. Um, so a scene, a scene. A scene is a tweenable color, which just means that you, this is something that has a color property that you can tween. Tweening means that you basically go fade this from this color to this color in this time of amount of time and then it works um, normally. So I, I make a tween target out of this scene. I tell it to use a quadrat quadratic easing formula that makes it not like linear, but it makes it like a, a curve, a nice curve. I tell it to fade into the color white and I tell it to start and then it just does that. It just changes the, the color over this duration. Now fade out is the same, but I, I do it over a transparent black. Um, in in-game I also do something like that, although... Um, I think I do it on when it connects. If I can find it. Oh, there it is. No, it's not. Huh? Why are you not there? Where are you? What are you doing? Oh, there it is. Okay, it does it on login, not on connect. Sorry, um, my bad. Um, yeah, so once you log in, it fades in the, the screen over 0.25 seconds. So we Isn't that nice? I think that's really nice. Um, you can customize the loading screen message and you can customize the texture that it uses. Um, that's not what I wanted to do at all. So over here we change the scene to the loading screen and we tell the scene font is this font, we load it. That's another thing that the loading screen does. It can have unloaded fonts and textures and then... Um... Hello little yappy dog. I hope you guys couldn't hear that. Um... Uh, it won't display it until it's actually loaded. And then we just tell it to load the tiles, which is the only asset that we currently need. And then the next scene is in game so it all it all works automatically that's ah, quite quite nice now we also have a G GUI graphical user interface thing that I did um, this is a little bit co complex so over here we have game G GUI and YouTube GUI manager now these are not set to compile in fact they are copied to the game directory, to this folder. And then what my uh, GUI does is it, it, it compiles it. So this is basically I need these assemblies and I wanted to use these namespaces and then it compiles an assembly from the code that I have in here. And then if I change the code, it will just reload it automatically. Um, so let's let's just let's just tr try to see if I can um, show you that. So uh, yeah, this is a bit ugly, but that's it's fine. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I want to add a message. Console dot right line loading GUI or something. I don't know. And then when I hit S, absolutely nothing happens. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted at all. 
Why does nothing happen? See, what was supposed to happen is that it would detect the changes. Oh, am I running debug? I am running debug. <laughs> I was in the wrong folder. That's fine, though. That's fine. I mean, you only made me look incredibly stupid on, on like, YouTube. But, you know, that's fine. I don't care. So, okay, let's do this again. So now, when I hit save, it'll detect that this file has changed and recompile and reload the GUI. Yay! Reloading GUI, loading GUI. Woohoo! So, we can do that again. Ah, no, it doesn't do it. That's not a very interesting um, thing, but that's not what you would usually use it for. And also, there's more to the GUI than that. So today, I wanted to do a little bit of GUI work, just um, just as a change of pace. We've, we've done a lot of, like, messing with this crap. We've done a lot of that, and I'm a little bit tired. I need a bit of a change of pace. So that's what we're going to do. Also, this is going out on Tuesday, because there haven't been videos in so long. One more thing that I wanted to uh, show you before, yeah, I'm just closing a thing off screen there, is render targets. This just gets, gets, it has two render targets because, because you only want, you want to minimize the number of render targets. This is needed for scenes to be able to fade. So you draw a scene into a render target, which is like an off screen screen, and then you render that to the main screen so you can fade in and out. So if you look here, um, it'll get a, a render target, set it to the graphics device, do the entire um, scene, clear the render target, set render target nil means clearing it, and then returns the render target, and then the container will if it has returned a render target, because you don't have to do that, you can draw straight to the screen if you want to. But if it has one, then it will use the scene's colour to draw it to the screen. Which is lovely. Um, Yeah. So what we want is to make a new scene. We're going to make a title screen. So title screen, I guess. I'm not sure if I want to call it title or title screen, but you know, that's fine. Um, what do we want? Scene. Okay. So this is a scene. And then do I need to do anything with the... Uh... Let's look at scene, because I can't remember. Let's just put that there. Um, okay, I need to contain a parent. Okay, that's fine. Title screen. Contain a parent. Call the base with a parent. And then that's the thing. Do you have any abstract things that I must? No, you do not. Okay, that's fine then. Um, so this should work. And then we want the container to not, to not do the thing. So this is the argument where the loading screen knows what its next scene is going to be. But instead of going into the game, we're going to go into the title screen. I'm going to make something later where I can just skip the entire title screen because that is going to take up so much time. Okay, so let's see if that works. Yay! Now the title screen doesn't do anything. So that's why that doesn't work. But if I do, if I overwrite the render function and then, I don't know, graphics device dot clear color dot corn, no, color. Would you just, my God. So if I do this, man, this will happen, woohoo. We obviously want to... Uh, do we want to render target 
Do I even care? Do I even give any shits? Nope. The answer, my friends, is an oping in the wind. So what I want to do is uh, the texture that the loading screen is using. So that's that's background one zero zero one dot png. Um, we want to have that. Yes, I would very much like to have that. So private texture background. Just, just go away. Background is that. We don't really need mipmap as false because it's already been loaded, but eh, whatever. Do we, do we need our own sprite batch? Eh, eh, that sucks. That is a bit of an oversight. What if I could just share one sprite batch? I mean, you already have a sprite patch. I mean, in the end, it doesn't really matter. But... I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out some other time. So, title screen. Oh, and then we also need to have override the exit, because we need to get rid of, of the sprite patch. So that sucks. So now, we want to, first, we need to have the height of the thing. Um, I saw that I did that in here. Maybe I want to move this into scene. I'm going to move these into, into scene. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So then, title screen. That's what we want. We want to have, we want to know the scale, the relative scale between the background and our current, so the scale, our current, you know, screen size, is, if the height is like half, then we want to have half scale. So we want height divided by background dot height. And then we want to make this a double, you know, like Team Rocket. We want to make that a double like Team Rocket. Batch dot begin, batch dot end, and then we want batch dot draw um, background a new rectangle. Okay, so uh, BG width is scale times background dot height bg height is the scale times the background dot height i did that wrong i always do that wrong so you know you wouldn't believe the, the amount of width height and xy bugs i've had in my lifetime so then we need to have the bgx so that's the width minus the width of the thing and then we divide that by two. Okay, so we want this to be BGX zero BG width, not BGQ, that's not what I wanted at all, and then color dot white which is just default. And then that should work. Hey! So that totally is a thing. So what we're doing is we're taking the center of the 1080p thing and we're scaling that across the screen. So that's nice. Now, what we need next is a GUI thing. So I'm gonna set that up and then I'll bring you back and we can have a look at that. Okay, okay. Well then, um, what I did is I added the GUI.show title screen function, which uh, this actually doesn't work. No, it goes to the, the interface. 
this is the interface is what the game uses to talk to the GUI because the GUI references the game so the game can't reference the GUI so it can't know about it so it implements this interface so the game can talk to it um, that was probably not clear at all if you don't know about interfaces and referencing and all that kind of stuff but I can't be bothered explaining more <laughs> I, well I can be bothered I just don't have the time right now um, I created this uh, login window.ui file which is actually just a JSON file um, this is very interesting so what this does is my GUI loader takes these files with all this stuff and then see so you see it here it's the same file turns it into this code file so let's have a look at that shall we uh, let's put this always on top okay um so the class is the login window so public class login window the base is the rect widget which is just a rectangle with the color so it inherits from rect widget and um, then the properties is over here it says with this hundred hide this hundred then this the cs there's a there's a number of tokens that you can do cs stands for c shop which means the following text is code and we want this to be inserted into the code file as is so it sets x to manager dot width which is the screen width minus our own width divided by two and um, this this these basically just center it then here it sets color to um, white so this is like an html color so red green blue but it also has alpha because that's convenient um in the actual file it turns this into an integer and then assigns that to colors because colors can take an in integer assignment and it this is this is basically the number of the of of the color white i don't know how to better explain that um then there's a render and all sorts of other stuff so basically it uses code generation to take this little file which is super easy to write and turn it into this honking big file which is rather harder to write so yeah um now the cool thing is let me run that okay so that works uh, when it starts the title screen it just adds this um it should probably also clear all the other bits okay so we have let's just close all of this mess um what are you over there no do do wrap don't be always on top okay um okay so we have all this mess now what if i want this to be red now remember that i said that the program looks at all these files and detects if they've changed and if they've changed it starts over although i just realized this is not going to work i don't think because it's not going to reload the widget yeah now it's gone gosh darn it um yeah that's a problem i'm gonna have to fix that i'll be right back while i i add some tech that lets me fix that uh, okay so i've i've i fixed that um let's just see how that works then so right now it's white i want it to be red so zero 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 save bam it's red BAM! White again! Okay, so... Uh, it's kind of squarish right now, so I kind of want this to be like 200... 250? 150? Something like that? Yeah, I suppose that'll do for now. Nah, I think it needs to be bigger. I think I might need to start upping the res of the game in general. But... I don't know okay so that is a big square now you can see why this is convenient before i would have to like to make these tweaks i have to shut down the game alter the code um build the code run the game test it 
and then do that five times. And that takes so much goddamn time. Okay, so let's close that down now. So we want to have some children. Um, we'll start with the one, the the main one, I guess. Right now we don't need more than, we don't need like a username and password, but we might as well. I mean, why not? How do I do this? I can't remember how I do this. Okay, so it's type and name. Okay, that's uh, fine then. Type, type, that's... So what I have is I also have a thing that generates the documentation for all of this, but it doesn't have the one thing that I needed, which was type. So we want a label. So we want label. We've already set a default font, by the way, so... In the loader, we've we were already loading the bolt, uh, Fira, Sans, or something. Um, now we're also loading the normal, the italic, and the bold italic, and we created uh, what I call a multi font, and set that as the default font. So that works. So we now have a font. Um, so I think it's font. Let's just make sure that we're doing this. Okay. Font gets or sets this label's font. This can be a font family or a file name. If not specified, a default font is used. Um, oh, so we don't need that. We just want to use the default font. Um, now, I also want to have padding. Yeah, let's just do that um, before it becomes a big issue. Uh, public const double window padding is on i10. That's fine. I mean, we can change all of this on the fly anyway. Uh, yeah. So, x is csgui.window padding. y is csgui.window padding. And we wanted to auto size, which I believe it automatically does. Defaults to true. Yep, that's good. Um, font color. Defaults to white. That is not what we want. Font color. So we want it to be a uh, black font. So I'm not sure if I can do this. I don't think I can. But maybe I can. But to be on the safe side, we're just gonna do it proper. Um, text. We want it to have, we want the label to have some text. So, user. N name? Y y user? Colon? I don't know. This is very, this is very tricky. Okay, um, we'll, we'll just do username for now. It's fine. And it doesn't show up, so that's that's a bit of a problem then, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, why are you not showing up? There? Did I not send a font size? No. Font color. Oh, oh, I set it to transparent black because I am an idiot. Now you work. Yay, you work. So we can set this to. Bold, I think. Do we want it to be bold? Maybe. Doesn't work. Well, that's fine. I mean, I haven't used this in an actual environment yet. Um, so, you know, this is going to be a bit of a longer episode, I think, because I. this is all taking a bit of time. Um, I hope you will forgive me. So... Now the only problem with like editing these files and not these files is that I then need to copy them back over over the things. So let's just do that. That did not work at all because of, I'm editing the wrong file. Um. So this was 400 and this was like 250. Was that a thing? 
Yes, that was a thing. Okay, now if I if I tell you to be bold, will you be bold? Or will you, you not be bold? You you won't be bold. Can I tell you to be italic? I think I may have screwed that up. So we want to have another one. Um, we want to have another label with password. And then we want the Y to be um, previous bottom. So this is another prefix that you can do. And then it will, by default, it'll multiply by the value, but you can also do like plus one. So that'll do that. Yeah. Um, so we probably want to be like I plus 10, 5, 8. Sure, that'll work. That'll do. Can you see how, how amazing this, this, this framework is? It's it's pretty good. Oh, I'm pretty happy about it. Um, actually, let's just do let's just do ten. Yeah. Um, especially since, as you can see, I can be quite fiddly and be like, no, this needs to be two pixels lower because but um, we also want to have a type text box, I think. Does that work? No! Invalid character in parser token. Wait, what did I do? Oh, I didn't add a comma. That is stupid. Stupid of me. Um, also, I set this to always copy, didn't I? Yeah. Only copy of newer, dear. Only copy of newer. Otherwise, it would overwrite what we just did. And that would be quite sad. You know, like it just did. I think. Oh, wait, you're now using... Okay, yeah, no, that, that's fine. Um, okay, so you also want to be at X... No, oh, no. Prev... R, so the previous right dot um, plus 20, I guess. Oh, we need to give this one a name too, because we need to use that. So, txt user. Um, and then we want to y to be the same, so we want prev... Um, Top prev y? I think it's prev y actually. So 1.0. Is that still gonna work? That is still gonna work. But it won't let me. Oh yeah, I need to set a height, don't I? Height, I don't know. Prev h. 1.0. Why can I not? Why can't I? But I want to! Test. No, it's not. Oh, because I didn't set, set the font colour. Because I am clearly an idiot. Now, does it work? No, it still doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to mess with this and then I'm basically just going to show you what I've done and wrap up the episode because this is getting very long. Okay then. So that took a lot longer than I was expecting. If you look at the, the clock over here, since when I paused and when I came back, I've been working steadily on fixing everything. So you can now make these bold. Also, I remember that you can use colors by name by just doing this prefix. So that helps. Um, tax boxes are now working. So that's good. I was, I was forgetting to set the height. So that was dumb. Also, the carrot wasn't showing. So I fixed that. Um, I created a button type, which is a, it, it's just basically a, a, a square with a label and you click on it. Um, 
So I added all of this, that works. Um, this, the, the password one is basically fake, so I just set it to text and then a bunch of asterisks. I added a button and then in you can set an on-click handler and that tells the game context that I want to log in with this username and this password. So I implemented that here. It just changes the scene using the dummy login so it doesn't really look at what we're doing. We'll probably fix that for the next episode, but for now just getting in-game was enough. And um, yeah, the, the manager now also has a show in-game thing, which um, clears the GUI. So let's see what that looks like, shall we? So you've got the password here, you can select it, you just, if you type anything, it's just going to overwrite it instantly, because it sets the properties every look through. Um, so we have a username, and it is quite long. So basically this is my text box, and it, it is basically what you would expect from a normal Windows text box. Um, it works in all the ways that you would expect it to. Um, I actually want to set a maximum length on that. Let's let's just do that while we're here anyway. Um, what was the thing for that? Oh, back to top. I am so smart. Uh, max length, right. It also has a support for, for undo and stuff. And uh, you can turn off that it says that it scrolls to the cursor. Um... Max length. Oh no. What's a good max length for a username? 64. That seems plenty. So we've done that. Um, it should have. So eventually it'll stop. Yeah. So it has a has a maximum length now. Um, it, it's not really doing anything here. Also, you can't select this, can you? No. I could set this so you can select and copy paste that, but I haven't. So this is the login button. If you click it, it goes down and then it just logs in. So that's that's all she wrote. Um, yeah, I really like my GUI framework, even though I haven't actually used it for anything. Um, but now we have a title screen, or a login screen, I'm um, not sure which you want to call it. I should put the should put the logo up here, I'll do that between episodes. Anyway, that's quite a long episode I think, so thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye bye